Okay, welcome back to the afternoon session on day 1 in uh, this workshop pedagogy for effective integration. The format of this session will be very similar to the one in the morning where you wrote learning objectives, learnt what is a learning objective and so on. So if you recall what we did in the morning, you first started by defining what was a learning objective. There was a scenario that helped you explain the need for learning objectives that is it helps reduce the mismatch between the teachers expectations and the students mind and so on. You also learned to distinguish between appropriate and inappropriate learning objectives. There were two or three peer instruction polling questions that you did uh, on this topic and you wrote two learning objectives in the topic which I think you may have uh, continued in the lab and if you have not continued it in the lab then you can just do so by today evening. There is a Moodle assignment posted on this topic. There were a couple of uh, questions on chat and I think many of you also might be thinking that well it is all well to write correct and valid learning ob objectives but for a given topic how many should we write, should they be simple or should they be difficult and so on. And it turns out that there is actually a formal theoretical basis that helps us determine the hierarchy of different cognitive levels. So hierarchy is like an order or uh, it is some uh, ordering in terms of difficulty or complexity and so on. So in this session let us focus on how to write different types or different levels of learning objectives. So what we will do at this point is uh, let us do this part using a video and then we will pause for an activity. Okay, this is video number 11 and you will see my colleague Madhuri talk a little bit and set up a scenario related to the order and after the scenario you can pause and uh, we will do an activity at that point. Now moving on to the say today's session. So just recollecting yesterday's lesson. If you remember these were my objectives, define learning objective, then explain need of learning objective distinguish between appropriate and inappropriate learning objective and write learning objectives in a given topic. So this is what were my learning objective for yesterday's class and after going through the session most of you that is being a participant most of you were able to do all these things. So this is the performance expected from you and your answers indicated that you were able to do all these things, you were able to meet this learning objective. Now for this session, now we will able to, you will able to list hierarchy of cognitive levels and you will able to write learning objective at various cognitive level after going through this session, after when we, when I will teach through this session you will able to do this. So this is the outcome expected from this session. So now again I will just briefly refresh with the same topic digital logic circuit being a simple topic most of the people may understand this what is the digital logic circuits this is just a refresher it is an electronic device which is able to take some logical decisions one example is given here and such basic gates are there so today's ex example also from the same topic now let us see the situation one faculty member who is teaching a second year electronic circuit class, she wanted to teach basic gates. Now what she did is, she explained gates using truth table. Then further to elaborate how gate performs, what she did is she draw, she has drawn waveforms and explain how the waveform process through this logical decisions and how you achieve output waveforms. And then further she tried to solve few problems based on the real life example and how to implement gates. Now few of her learning objectives are as follows. Students will be able to write truth table for a basic gate. Then students will be able to draw output waveform when the gate combinations are given to the student. And they will able to draw logic diagram when a real life problem is given to the student. So these are three learning objectives was set up by this faculty. So now let us see for each of this learning objective there are different expected outcomes. I am going to pause this video at this point and ask you 
one question, a short polling question at this point. So, essentially the question we are posing is that these three learning objectives that the teacher wrote are they at the same level and what we mean by a level is think in terms of complexity or hierarchy and so on. I am going to enable the polling and if you can just quickly do a poll, this is more like a warm up poll, it is not a very challenging question at this point. So, there are three learning objectives A, B and C. Is there a hierarchy A less than B less than C or A greater than B greater than C or A equal to B equal to C or do you think they are all the same? So, let us take a look at. So, please use the poll. Let me just read out the three choices once again that students will be able to write truth table of a basic gate, just truth table. The second is students will be able to draw output waveforms for a gate combination. So, if you are from a different domain uh, and you do not understand this topic, it is ok. What I would like you to concentrate on is actually the words that are there in the choices. So, truth table is essentially a table which says what are the inputs and what are the outputs. The inputs are 0 and 1 and the output is also 0 and 1. So, the first one is that students will be able to write the truth table of a very basic gate, single gate. The second choice is that student will be able to draw out forms for not just a single gate, but for given gate combinations. And the third one is that student will be able to draw a logic diagram. So, that is the entire think of it like a circuit diagram if you are not very familiar with the topic for a given real life problem. So, if you do not know this domain concentrate on the words basic gate, given gate combinations and real life problem. Try to say what are the different levels in terms of uh, which seems to be higher and which seems to be lower and so on. Okay. So, let us go back to the video and try to analyze these three different learning objectives. I am going to have paused the video, let me just restart the video, resume the video and let us try to analyze these three learning objectives. And they will able to draw logic diagram when a real life problem is given to the student. So, these are three learning objectives was set up by this faculty. So, now let us see for each of this learning objective there are different expected outcomes. Now, what are they? Student will be able to write truth table of basic gates. So, when they say that they will able to write truth table, they are just recalling truth table from the memory which is already taught by faculty member and they will just reproduce in the exam or they will just reproduce in the notebook. Now, moving ahead look at the second one, student will be able to draw output waveform for given gate combination. What this means? Now, they have to first interpret the logic diagram that is whatever is the gate combination given to them. Then they will find output for each block or each gate in an entire logic diagram. Then they will combine it apply truth table and then they will say that what is the final output. Now, here if you can see the first learning objective, they are just recalling whatever is taught to them. In the second learning objective, what they are, what is expected at the student level more than recall. So, here little bit of thinking from the student point, little bit of integration from the student point is expected more than recall. So, they have to recall truth table, but they have to even implement it for a given diagram of the gates. Now, let us move to the third learning objective. Now, what this third, third learn objectives, learning objective says? Student will be able to draw logic diagram for given real life problem. Now, a real life problem is given to them. They have to identify how many inputs are there, then which logical decisions to be taken. They have to identify even gates then I decide what is the combination and then they will able to draw logic diagram. So, all these steps should be done by student, all this level of thinking should be done by student. So, if we look at the previous ones again, 
the first one is they will are able to write only truth table so students effort are only at the recall level then they are now recalling truth table through this learning objective they are recalling as well as they are trying to implement it to or they are putting some effort interpreting the truth tables and trying to apply to the gate combination now if we move ahead to the third one what is happening is here more than recall interpretation they are trying to apply it to the different situations so lot of things are going involved from student point of view or student thinking point of view but the point is when there are different types of learning objectives at an intuitive level all teachers feel that there is some difference in the level of learning objectives there is some order some are in a way easier some are more complex so as was explained in the video in the first learning objective it was only about recalling a certain table recalling some numbers or some patterns whereas in the last one it was applying a whole set of rules to solve a real life problem so now what happens is in order to make this intuitive feeling a little more formal there is a theoretical basis and that goes by the name of revised bloom's taxonomy so benjamin bloom was an educational psychologist and sometime around the 1950s he provided a structure for the thinking types of thinking or thinking behaviors these are called cognitive levels and this this structure gives you a level and it's like a ladder of how you go from simpler thinking to more challenging and more complex thinking now it turns out that this uh, this structure was called a taxonomy and sometime in the 90s it was revised a little bit and so these days it's called as revised bloom's taxonomy so what we'll do from now on is go through each step of this revised bloom's taxonomy and what you will do after every two steps is pause and i will pause and have you write various learning objectives at different levels so this is just a snapshot revised bloom's taxonomy has six levels going from what is called a lower level of thinking called recall to highest level of thinking called create now when we say lower or higher it's just in terms of the ease with which a learner needs to apply their their cognitive process it's not that there is anything bad with the lower and or anything but we in science and engineering and all subjects in fact we do want our students to move through the hierarchy to get to all the levels okay so i'm going to go one level by one level and the lowest level is called recall so what happens in recall is that the learner or the student needs to focus on memorization of facts recalling of information remembering formula remembering symbols and so on each level is associated with what we call as an action verb and if you recall the earlier session we said that when we write learning objectives each learning objective must contain an action verb which signifies the performance outcome of a student that is a student should be able to do something the student should be able to write remember identify and so on so the verb in a learning objective is called the action verb and for each level there are a set of action verbs that you can use when you write learning objectives so the action verbs that go with recall are list identify define state and so on i'm only showing you some examples in this slide so let's look at one example of a learning objective at recall level so it says that student will be able to draw the logic symbol of and gate why is this a recall level question because in order to address this objective what is expected is that the student recalls the symbol it's some think of it as a diagram that represents this object if you're not familiar with this topic so the student needs to remember what this symbol looks like and draw it so it very cleanly fits the definition of focusing on memorization and recall or reproduct 
production of information and facts. So, let us go one level higher now and look at the second level and unfortunately the second level is called understand and the reason I say unfortunately is that in the modeling we said understand itself is not a really good action verb. So, do not mind that too much uh, formally in the theory this level it is not an action verb understand is not an action verb, but it is the name of the level. So, understand is one step above recall because the student not only needs to recall the information, but also needs to grasp the meaning, explain what something meant, interpret the meaning, maybe translate or paraphrase into their own words and so on. Give examples for a given definition. So, understand is more than memorization, it is about making meaning and explaining and interpretation. Typical action verbs for the level cognitive level of understand are describe, explain, give example of, select and so on. So, recall and understand form the basic two levels, the bottom two levels of this framework which is called the hierarchy of cognitive levels or revised Bloom's taxonomy. So, what you can do at this point is an activity where you work in pairs. I will show it on the next slide, there is no polling here, but uh, okay, let me just show you one example and then I will go to the activity. The example is that student will be able to write the truth table for a given combination of AND gates. Why is this understand and not recall? Let us spend a minute on that. If this question said that student will be able to write the truth table for a single gate that becomes a memory question. But when there are multiple gates like a combination of gates the student has to take the truth table of one gate and do some small calculation or small interpretation along with the table of the second gate and interpret the total output. So, it is one step more than recall. So, what you can do at this point is uh, choose a partner from your domain. Ideally, if somebody is teaching the same course or a similar course that is fine, otherwise choose a partner from your domain. And this morning you had written some learning objectives, you can choose the same topic preferably or if you have a different topic that is ok. And within your chosen topic, write one learning objective in the recall level and one learning objective in the understand level. So, what I am going to do at this point is uh, once you I will give you a minute on this slide and then I will go back to the slide which puts the definitions of recall and understand to help you do this activity. So, take about say 5 minutes or so 4 to 5 minutes and choose a partner. You will do this activity for all 6 levels. So, stick with that partner and write one learning objective in each level. So, 4 to 5 minutes for this activity. You need to write total 2 learning objectives, one each for recall and understand. So, one for recall and one for understand in the same topic. So, do not change the topic midway and you are going to keep the same topic for all 6 levels. So, let us go to this activity the next part of it. So, the first part was you had to write each participant along with a partner had to write one audio and one video. What I would like to do next very quickly is I would like to see what you have written. So, coordinators if you can collect a few learning objectives and share it with us on AVU, maybe just a minute or so for this exercise and then we can move on to the next part of it. It gets more and more interesting, so I do want to move to the apply and analyze levels. So, share your responses, your objectives with your coordinators and I will try to look at it and uh, give you some feedback on it. I uh, will just read out a few to give an idea of what people are saying. So, student will be able to define a diode. This is ok provided there is a well accepted definition of a diode. A slightly uh, one more on the similar lines was student will be able to identify the rank of a matrix. Student will be able to list various characteristics of a particular device. So, usually we go back to the action verbs as long as you have list, state, 
identify, define and all those form learning objectives at the recall level. And at the understand level let me again try to find a few to read out. So again at the recall anytime you want students to mention a particular law students will be able to state Ohm's law, state second law of thermodynamics those are all at the recall level. There is one here which I want to point out as an inappropriate learning objective and the reason is it says students will be able to know how the operating system works. If you recall know is a little problematic because it is not very well defined, it is not measurable. So avoid the word no. On the other hand if you say that students will be able to explain the features of good interface design that might work as understand level and so on. Okay, so let us move on uh, if you could please stop sending your responses I am going to move on to the next part. So the level above understand is called apply and in science and engineering this apply level is perhaps one which is the most familiar to all of us because all of routine problem solving the standard back of chapter textbooks are in this apply level and the definition of apply is to use knowledge in a new situation. So that sounds a little simplistic but essentially what it means is there need to be rules or patterns or methods or laws and when the learner uses these rules to in a new situation in a new scenario that is called an apply level. So action verbs are apply is one action verb in of itself but calculate is a very typical action verb solve, predict and so on. So I will give you a few examples um, solve the following two simultaneous equations, predict what will be the output of a program calculate what happens if these three uh, gates are connected gates or devices are connected in this manner. If you look at apply level in order to use a rule the student has to be able to interpret the rule the student has to be able to say state very clearly what the different symbols mean the student has to be able to relate the different variables in a formula and so on. So what I am trying to say is that in order to get at apply level the student has to be able to do understand and recall. Similarly in order to be able to interpret something the student has to be able to define it or has to be able to state the law. So another hallmark of this hierarchy is that any of the higher levels subsume all the lower levels. So you can go ahead and write one at the highest level and then you can even break down and see what are the lower level learning objectives needed in order to achieve the higher level. So if you take any at any level this holds true. So there are two hallmarks one is that there is there are levels so lower higher still higher and so on and the higher ones subsume the lower levels. So if you go to the level after apply that level is called analyze. And this is where sometimes people have difficulty as to what is apply and what is analyze. So let us look at the formal definition and then we will go through a few examples. So analyze says that there is some complex entity some whole which needs to be separated into parts so that the structure what are the different pieces in the complex entity as well as the relationship between the pieces is clear. So a very good example of a complex whole is take a complex circuit maybe there are two transistors several resistors wires connecting it meters and so on an amplifier circuit or some large circuit that you have in your lab. So think of the circuit as your complex whole. Now in order to be able to say what is the output of the circuit what the learner has to do is first separate the whole into various parts that is well this seems to be an input part here is a processor part here is a control part here is some impedance part and so on and the structure the various parts must be clear and the relationship between how this 
transistor re relates to that other impedance and so on. So, the relation between these parts must be clear. So, the difference between apply and analyze is that before solving or before calculating in analyze this separation of whole into parts needs to be done. Usually in an apply level problem the separation is already done. So, that is why it is at a lower level. So, let me see if I have an example from logic gates. Okay, so, maybe this is one of them that this is realize the operation of BCD to binary decoder using optimum gates. So, the outcome is it has to start by writing the truth table, there is a recall level, decide which function performed, possible gates. So, there is a lot of things that need to be done before going into analyze level. So, what I would like to do at this point is go to the next part of your activity again here choose I mean stay with the same partner, same topic and for your chosen topic write one learning objective and apply and one learning objective and analyze, share it with your coordinator and coordinator please share it with us. So, I am going to put back the definitions, but your task for the next 5 minutes is to write one objective each in apply and analyze level. Okay, let me read a couple of apply levels that have come, I do not recall seeing any analyze levels yet. So, one says that students should be able to apply the current voltage equation to predict the characteristics of a diode. Uh, students should be able to calculate the horizontal angle between any two given points on the ground. Calculate the z transform of the following equation. So, you see that predict and calculate are two very typical objectives or two typical action verbs that are used in the apply level that should work for most of yours. Let me see if there is any analyze level. Okay, so, uh, I will give you two or three more examples and then we will move on. I also got couple of you are asking for examples from specific domains that is a little difficult for us to do because we know that many of you are from various domains. So, we will I'll, as and when I see examples from your own responses I am going to read them out. At the same time on Moodle we will post some examples from various domains of objectives from various levels. So, today evening or by tomorrow we will post examples and here we are looking at the examples that are commonly coming from the various participants. So, I am going to uh, read out 3 or 4 more, I think most of these are in analyze level uh, in non electronics domains. Okay. So, this one is from uh, gas liquid reactions. Okay. So, for an apply level you can say that students will be able to predict the rate equations for each reaction regime. Again you keep pay attention to the action verbs and for an analyze level students will be able to ascertain if a given equation belongs to a certain regime. Another analyze level is students will be able to infer the parameters that go into determination of antibody diversity determine the critical control points for particular hazards. So, again you see that there is calculation to be done in these last two, but before doing the calculation some complex system has to be analyzed into its constituent parts. Okay, so, let us move on uh, if you can stop sending questions. So, these are all really good examples many of you are sending and if you are not sure you can actually chat with each other in your own RC or even on the Moodle forum you can share each of this with each other. So, let us go to the final two levels, the last but one level is called evaluate and the difference or the, the main point in evaluate is that there are some criteria on which the learner has to make decisions or judge the value of something. Action verbs are assess, conclude, contrast, evaluate, infer also often belongs into evaluate. Now, if you have questions as to is something analyze or evaluate it seems to be on the border do not worry too much because the point here is not to exactly pinpoint each objective into one of these slots. But the point is to try to give ourselves a framework for writing objectives at different levels. So, if something is on the border it is ok put it into whatever you think is more suitable. It is unlikely that you will be confused between evaluate and apply but it is possible that you will be confused a little bit at the borders that is that is completely ok. So, any time a student has to decide something, decide if 
method A is better or method B is better for a goal. Decide if a particular set of parameters is going to work for a given goal. Such questions belong in evaluate level. So here is one example, compare and contrast two methods for implementing a given function. Why is this evaluate? Because firstly each method has to be analyzed and some calculation has to be done as to which one is faster or more efficient and then a decision has to be taken between these two methods. So evaluate, subsumes, analyze just like all the other levels. And the most, the highest level is called create. So create is essentially generation of new ideas or products, design, all problems where you say design a system for, design a circuit for, design a new method for, they will fall under create, most of them. Simply solving a problem, so if we say write a program to solve this problem, it is likely going to be in apply level. But if you are going to design an entire system which involves the evaluation and creation and so on, that will be under create level. Often modification of an existing design is also considered as create. So let us see one example here. Okay, as uh, I mentioned, design of a counter or state machine and so on. So, what you can do at this point is uh, stick with your partner, write one question and evaluate and create, share a few and after that we will tell you what to do. So, essentially this session is about these different levels. So I'm going to leave this slide on while you work on writing one question in evaluate level and one in create level. Try to keep to the same topic. Okay, so it looks like a lot of interesting evaluate and create level questions are coming in and let me just read out a few and I'll also mention what is not okay as in which, which what is not essentially a question at evaluate or create level. So if you simply use the word evaluate and use it to mean calculate, it could become an apply level problem. So students should be able to evaluate the result of a formula. You may use the word evaluate and it is grammatically correct, but it is not an evaluate level in revised Bloom's taxonomy because all students have to do in evaluate the result of a formula is plug in numbers and calculate the answer. So action verbs are a useful guide, but they are not everything in the sense that action verbs alone will not tell you the level, but it is whether the student is actually working at that level. There was another learning objective which is a little vague. It says students should be able to analyze electrical machines and magnetism. Now this is not wrong, but the reason it is yet imprecise is it is not clear what is the goal of the analysis. So when you say students should be able to evaluate something or analyze something, the goal for which it is being done should be very clear. So analyze a machine, analyze with respect to efficiency or power or ease of use. So the criteria of analysis or evaluation should also be made clear in the objective itself. So let me read a few evaluate level questions. Okay. So students should be able to evaluate if a member is a truss or a frame. I don't know civil engineering or statics that well, but this sounds reasonably okay. They should be able to conclude which factors affect most for some variable. So if there are several factors which affect some output, deciding which of the factors has a higher impact is clearly an evaluate level question. Students should be able to assess the need for a given procedure, so there is some procedure for a specific goal also. It is not just a procedure in of itself, but procedure for some purpose or some goal. Then this becomes an evaluate level question. And comparing linear and binary search technique for given problems. So you see simply saying compare two techniques, it can even be a recall level question. But if you give student a specific scenario and ask them which technique is better or faster 
for that goal or for that given problem, then it is an evaluate level question. Similarly, in terms of create, I think most of you went with design or generate. So, students should be able to generate some amplitude mod modulated signal, design a new TCP protocol, design an algorithm for something, system for given a constraint. So, these go to create level. Okay, so, let us just quickly summarize the session and the point of this revised Bloom's taxonomy is to essentially it is to give us guidelines in terms of definitions of the levels and action verbs, so that we can write learning objectives at different levels. After we write learning objectives, recall the previous session, we need to make sure that the assessment questions on the exam are aligned to it. And there is a third thing in that triangle that you saw this morning. The teaching learning strategies used in class also must be aligned to the same level of the objective and the assessment question. So, let us conclude this session right now. We take a break for tea and then you can proceed on to your lab.